let's learn imaging of pulmonary tuberculosis chest tuberculosis can be divided into pulmonary tb and extra pulmonary tb lungs are the most common site of involvement and extra pulmonary involves lymph nodal tuberculosis pleural tuberculosis less commonly chest wall tuberculosis cardiac tuberculosis breast and rib tuberculosis can be found Diagnosis is made using sputum acid fast bacilli analysis but the drawbacks are delay in diagnosis and low sensitivity of this test. Hence imaging modalities have to be used for diagnosis. The first modality is chest x-ray which is done in unexplained cough with expectoration cases. The patient might have fever with or without weight loss. This is also used for follow up of diagnosed cases of TB. Next is the CT chest which is used in diagnosis in sputum negative cases and in suspected extra thoracic involvement. In this video we are going to discuss about primary tuberculosis which is more commonly found in infants and children. Nowadays shows increased incident in adults. This is most commonly found in endemic areas. Next is the post primary tuberculosis also known as TB reactivation. This occurs when a latent infection undergoes reactivation or the patient has a reinfection. Coming to primary tuberculosis, the mode of infection is inhalation of airborne organisms which then infects lung. The primary parenchymal focus in lung is called Gons focus. There will be enlarged draining lymph nodes associated that is ipsilateral hilar or mediastinal nodes. Both of these together is known as Ranke or Gons complex. What to look for in imaging? The GONS focus is more commonly found in mid and lower zones and in the peripheral aspect and sometimes can be obscured. So do watch CT chest. And the lymphadenopathy associated with it involves right paratracheal, hilar and subcaranal group of lymph nodes which is well visualized on contrast enhanced CT chest. On CT chest we can see the GONS focus as a dense, well defined peripheral homogeneous nodule and the lymphadenopathy associated with Gons focus shows a rim sign that is peripheral enhancement with central non-enhancing necrotic areas. It can also show heterogeneous enhancement. Now what is the course of the primary TB? The primary pulmonary TB can heal with scarring or with calcification. It can lead to latent infection by the dormant organism and can reactivate in future in conditions like immunosuppression, malnutrition or old age. It can progress to form progressive primary TB which can show cavitation or miliary nodules. Let's discuss in detail about latent infection which can undergo reactivation or reinfection leading to post primary tuberculosis or TB reactivation. The features are liquefaction of caseous necrosis which can form cavitation which is surrounded by consolidation. It can cause bronchitis or endobronchial spread of infection leading to central obular nodule showing tree in bud pattern. In the end stage it can show fibrotic or atelectatic changes. Let's see in detail the radiological features of post-primary TB. The endobronchial infection appears on chest x-ray as consolidation or alveolar opacities and on CT chest they appear as centrilobular nodules. The endobronchial infection shows upper lobe predominance. Next the endobronchial infection can spread to other lobes and segments known as bronchogenic spread of infection more commonly seen in lower lobes. There can be 2 to 4 mm centrilobular nodules which classically show endobronchial spread or tree in bud appearance. This can be seen in various infection which shows endobronchial spread. The other features are cavitation which is surrounded by consolidation especially thick walled cavitation. This can be present with air fluid levels and can also show Rasmussen aneurysm. This is when a cavity erodes a pulmonary artery leading to hemoptysis. End stage tuberculosis looks something like this. There will be architectural distortion of the whole lung parenchyma. The other changes are bronchiectasis, 
fibrosis and collapse. Now let's see features seen both in primary and post primary tuberculosis that is miliary tuberculosis where 1 to 3 millimeter nodules in random distribution are seen more commonly seen in children this is due to hematogenous spread of infection. Next is the pleural involvement in tuberculosis which is very important which can be in the form of pleural effusion or empyema which shows classical split pleura sign on contrast enhanced CT scan. If this empyema ruptures out to the skin surface it's called empyema necessitans. Moving on to tracheobronchial involvement of tuberculosis. If this is the cross section of trachea then TB can cause granulomatous inflammation of trachea causing circumferential luminal narrowing. This can lead to fibrotic bronchostenosis or it can cause bronchiectatic changes. The calcified lymph nodes either hilar or mediastinal can erode into the bronchi and cause bronchiolith formation. Now the most important part of this talk, how to differentiate active versus healed tuberculosis. Active tuberculosis shows features like consolidation with or without cavity, lymphadenopathy which shows classic enlarged conglomerated nodes with trim sign and central necrosis. There can be thick walled cavity, effusion or empyema and central lobular nodules. These are the features of active TB and then healed tuberculosis shows some features like fibrotic changes, thin walled cavitations, bronchiectasis, atelectasis or collapse of lung segments and then calcified nodules. Lymph nodes can be calcified in chronic stages. It can cause pleural thickening or calcification as a sign of healing. What are the complications of pulmonary tuberculosis? There can be destructive changes in lung parenchyma. There can be secondary aspergillosis infection causing aspergilloma or the fungal ball which can form in the previously existing cavity. There can be Rasmussen aneurysm as explained prior. The pleural thickening can lead to fibrothorax which is a sequelae to chronic empyema. Other complications are scar carcinoma, pericarditis and mediastinal fibrosis. Lastly, let's discuss checklist for reporting TB cases. Look for consolidation, nodules or ground glass opacities and mention the segments or lobes which it is present. If you find a cavity, then please mention whether it's thin walled or thick walled cavity and look for any presence of aspergilloma. Next is look for features of old tuberculosis infection that is bronchiectasis, bronch Kill wall thickening, atelectasis or collapse of any lung segment, any calcified nodules and if any fibrotic opacities are present. After looking at the lung, let's look at pleura for any effusion or empyema and look for enlarged nodes in hilum or mediastinum. Please comment on the enhancement pattern and calcification if any and any other findings present. Impression can be something like features suggestive of active TB, features suggestive of sequelae to old TB, features indeterminate for TB or suggestive of any other disease. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our Instagram handle at Radiology Doodles.